and Africa is held, is part of this miracle. But guess what? Majority portion of Africa has more energy to power the whole world. But why is Africa still in Africa? Why Africa? But look at it. Africa is the home to a host of fast growing businesses. Over the last 10 years, it has done six out of the world's 10 fastest growing economies. While everyone has been focusing on Russia, Brazil, and all that, Africa was busy growing. Okay? The number of middle class Africans has crippled over the last 10 to 40 years. It's so amazing. So, when you look at it, Africa is one of the few places in the world with increasing number of labor force. Youth, old, middle, middle adults, or whatever. You find them there. And if you want to really grow your wealth, Africa is a place to be. Because you will make money. If you put sand on the side of the road, people will buy it. Hmm. Believe me. However, to catch up with the industrial world, Africa needs standard and reliable energy sources so it can grow and drive its economy. And that's a lot of potential. Look, the need for development is critical in sub saharan data area. Why? That's where most of the populations are. I'm going to show you this map. If you put the United States, China, India, Europe, East and West Europe, it will still fit into the whole continent of Africa. That's how big Africa is. And it's no brainer to come to find out that the same big continent is the only one lacking in everything, but it has its own energy. And I'll tell you why. Look at the map here. It shows you the, it depicts the red using the world map areas representing concentrated slavery in Africa. This is modern day. We still have slavery in Africa. Why? Why? And look at this other map. They clearly depict the pastoral and the cultural pastoral differences between northern and southern Africa. But then look at the rest of the world. So the fight is not just taking it home to Africa. We are going to rebuild Africa. But Africa cannot be rebuilt by foreigners, by Chinese. It has to be rebuilt by Africans. So if you have a notion that some people are going to come from Europe and they are going to build Africa for you, you are mistaken. Because it's not going to happen. Look at the poor and inadequate development of Africa. It can be reflected and best understood by West Africans. This is the digital imprint. These are the continents or countries of the world where you have internet, Wi-Fi. Look at Africa. Okay? No lights in there. Why? Huh? It's that. All the other continents are weak. Well, what happened in Africa? It's that. They call us a dark continent. But we are the first of civilization, science, and technology we have developed in Africa. We have progress, critical heritage, we have governance, architecture, arts and humanity, energy, minerals, all of that. And that's where we're going to start. Okay? Uh, <clears throat> I wanted to give a big respect to President Barack Obama when it comes to power in Africa. That was the first time any American president we really truly focus on power in Africa. We took the initiative to start a program. Not only the Agora program, but it's called Power Africa. Electrification of all of Africa. No president in the United States has ever tried. None. So I wrote my hat for him. And most of the days are asking what is energy. Because everybody talks about energy in Africa, energy. There's a difference between energy and power. What is energy? Even educated folks, they still confuse what energy and power is. Energy is different from power. Please turn the light up. You see what power is. You hope this will do us for that. But is that energy? No. 
Energy is used to create power. And that's one of the reasons why most of the leaders don't get it. And why do we need energy in Africa? It makes good business sense. Anything you do, you need power. And power is driven by what? By energy. And I'm not going to go through all this for you. I mean, it's something that I wanted to highlight so you can see it. Because Africa is a mystical world. 1.1 billion living people in Africa. And we're still striving and talking about energy. Look at the global economic standing. The seventh biggest economy. I want to top 10 percent growing economy in Africa. Angola, Nigeria, Ethiopia, Chad, Mozambique. Rwanda. Why is that? It's because they have what? They have a solid base energy in oil and gas and natural gas. Natural gas is one of the most contributing factors to development because you can use it to produce what? Electricity. So, 13 percent growing economy in the world. Where is Africa? We have Rwanda, Tanzania, Mozambique. Papua New Guinea, Kuala Lumpur, Democratic Republic of Congo, then Ethiopia. So why are we having problems with energy? Okay? The end of this presentation are twofold. Define energy, provide an overview of energy and power, and highlight the main environmental impact of energy. Because we will draw produce this energy, but what is it contributing back to the environment? You want to use energy for what? To power your home, the industries. But what are the impacts? Like I said earlier, energy is not power, power is not energy. Energy is used to produce power. But it's any natural, artificial resource, renewable or non-renewable, that cannot be created. You cannot create energy. It's natural. I don't know anybody who can create oil and gas right now. It's a resource that was created long time ago. And once you use it, it's depleted. But you can use oil to produce power. The power can be in form of what? Electricity, which is what we are enjoying here. So, We'll turn to that. Let's get straight to the differences between power and energy. Power is needed to operate devices, your computer, your cell phone, everything is based on what? Power. And to generate this power, we need what? We need a lot of resources. Renewable energy are things that you can renew. Like wind, okay? Geothermal, solar. Water and violence. The non renewable ones are coal, natural gas, nuclear, and crude oil. If you use those, you are done when they are done. Okay? They are not replaced, you can't replenish it. So, what do we do? The first thing we need to do is identify their sources so we can know how to manage them for future use for our children, not for us. Because we've wasted a bunch of energy in our life. You know, the children that are coming are the ones that we need to look at. And renewable energy are generated from natural resources such as sunlight, wind, rain, tide, ocean waves, geothermal, and on and on goes. Non-renewable on the other hand. Which is what is causing environmental problems. You dealing with coal it has its negative impact. Crude oil has its negative impact. Natural gas has its negative impact. Well, uranium, which we use in the nuclear industry, has a serious impact. So, what do we do? We need the energy to push. 
that's the frontier of development. But how do we go about these sources of energy? How can we tap it responsibly without damaging the environment? Well, there are some secondary energy sources that we can also play with. Like battery cells, we have hydrogen. Some people are even toying with drops of water molecules. So these are other sources that we can look at. But the one that is taking a lot of our time, effort and energy, and no pun intended, is the non-renewable one. Food oil, for instance. It takes a lot of work to identify, drill, produce, and use crude oil. It takes a, a lot of effort, a lot of money. Same thing with natural gas. So, unless you are in Pennsylvania and some other places in the United States, most of these industries don't even have coal to produce electricity anymore. Okay? They run at the nuclear or natural gas or crude oil. Now, the energy sources in Africa, going back to Africa, is very regionalized. It's very regionalized. African regions are divided by the kind of energy that we use. Most of us don't even notice. Though we have all these resources, in the northern part of Africa, most of them use oil and natural gas. In southern parts, in South Africa, coal is predominantly the energy source that they use, but we subsidize it with oil and gas. Then in the South Sahara, what do they use? They use the mixture. Okay? So natural gas, crude oil, coal, firewood, and nuclear are the play maker. Those are the sectors that we play with when it comes to energy in Africa. General energy sectors in Africa, key energy sectors include the industries, but they use a lot of energy. Power generation sector to produce electricity. Commercial and public building sector, you talking about oil and company. We have universities, uh, big businesses. Then you have residential sector. Most of your homes are powered by what? Electricity. And you go to OGRE or what do you use over here in the corner? OAG. What do you have to do that mean for? Okay. Then you have the transport sector, where you have the airline industry using fuel jet and all that, and agricultural sector, farming and human development. Those are the sectors that you have in Africa too. So there's a lot of similarities in the use of energy. And look at the pattern. Wind, fossil fuel, oil, natural gas, solar, hydro. These are the mixed sources of energy that you can use in Africa. But, like I said earlier, the northern Africa heavily reliant on oil and gas. The southern heavily reliant on coal and oil and gas. But the South Sahara heavily reliant on traditional biomass and a mixture of oil and gas and these other uh, non renewable sources. What really gets me, and this is what we, are, we have to deal with before we close today. Most African countries still import oil, despite the amount of oil and gas that are available. Why? Africa is home to some of the world's fastest growing economy. In 2005, there were 39 net importers and 10 net exporters in Africa. Okay? 16 of the 54 countries in Africa are exporting oil. Even Nigeria. I was at the Kaduna refinery doing some work for them. I was before when they told me, well, I need to come and see the Venezuela oil that they are going to use to produce gasoline. <laughs> <laughs> I said, are you mad? 
What is the truth? We were importing oil from Venezuela. Okay? Africa's open reserves of natural gas, gas have grown from 210 trillion to be feet in 1980 to 593 trillion to in 2012. But guess what? This natural gas is what you need to power your home and all this stuff using coal generation and all that. Why can't we use it? Why not? Oh no, we're waiting for GE and Britney, Wagner, or whatever they call them to come and develop it for us. Right here on campus, and I'll give you this. I attended an energy seminar. One of the mobile, mobile, extra mobile people was there, the VP. And I asked him, I said, sir, you guys have been in Africa for more than 40 years. How come you can't help us to develop our natural gas so we can use it domestically? And he looked at me and smiled and said, Dr. Eddie Williams, it's not in our best interest to develop it for you. <laughs> I wanted to get out and try and do it. <laughs> but he was right. It's not in the best interest of foreigners to develop African resources for us. We have to develop it for us. I was even embarrassed to stand up there. I'm the owner of Black Crystal Energy. Well, it's all right, but what are you doing here? But guess what? And Dr. Chris Root and Pia Testimonies, we have sent several proposals. We have tried to enter the energy market in Africa, especially in Nigeria. What happened? Same corruption. Bring money. And you know what? That man won't be a dime for anybody. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I have an oil and gas company. I have an energy company. And I have a construction company. The very moment you pay money to somebody in terms of corruption, your business is dead. But some of the time is what? It's looking at you. Look at all these people in Africa, in the energy sector. Most of them have oil blocks. They don't know what a trillion really looks like. But they have oil blocks. If you ask them, what kind of production statistics do you have this month? So what? Production what? Who gives a right ass about that? I'm making money. That's all I need. See, those are the key problems that we are having. You lack, our lack of energy policy is another factor. factor. Poor leadership is another factor. Okay? Then if you talk about the non oil sector, whose GDP doesn't even hold oil, they have to be forcefully dependent on some of these oil producing countries. It's a vicious cycle. And none of our leaders sees it. That's why it just infuriates me when people get up there and say, I'm going to have to start in and I'm going to get contract from the government. You don't need government contract. You need to start your own business and do your own business with your own money. <laughs> this young lady will tell you, I started my company here on campus. When she was in college, she was one of the people that helped me to go around to sell t-shirts. I designed it. And he was one of the first few people to buy some of my t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> if you cannot start the business here, start it somewhere else. Don't wait for the government to come and give you government contracts. It's not going to happen. The people that are there don't want you there. And you are going there, you want to start business. They will kill your business before you even start it. We went there, we developed a program to make Nigerian electrical power industry very independent by using natural gas, true underground natural gas and uh, uh, storage. He designed it, I'm promoting it. We got it there. What did the politicians want? Well, I don't think Nigeria is ready for this. Oh, well, the 
if you put your ten million dollars, will be. I said, look, you, I don't want to say, but if I have ten million dollars. <laughs> They told us right now, yeah, that's not her. So I should use my own media to give it to you to do nothing for me so I can come back here and have nothing to show for me. You know, so the implication is very rhetoric. And once they once you are up to the idea, I mean ask it, there's no president in Nigeria that I don't know. That I don't have dinner with. But you know what? They are all rules, and I say the public. They are indisciplined because you should be ashamed that your people are in darkness, and you are going around in your radar. I'm the president of Nigeria. I'm the president of Rwanda. You are a useless head. If your people are suffering and you are enjoying, it, you are a useless president. Right. Yeah. That's number one. Here it is. Now everybody is crying. China. China. Shaking hands with China is going to improve Africa. <laughs> <laughs> 20 billion voyage invested in Africa. That's what China is ready to do. I didn't come up with this. This is US energy information. The resources of the world. They are the growing economy. So it's impossible. Look at the global demographics. For pleasure trains impact energy. You have to grow with your population and the use of energy is important. If you don't grow your energy uh, resources with the population, you will suffer. You will have energy poverty. And that's what we have in Africa. Industrial energy demands. Industries eat up most of the energy requirements. You have iron and steel industry, manufacturing industry, textile industry, fishing. This Nigeria represents a typical developing African nation. And it still doesn't get it right. It didn't get it right. <clears throat> so, we have to look at the household growth. It is driven by demand, subdivision development. You have to need, I mean, you need to have electricity to power out the lights in the subdivisions. So, all said and done, what are we going to do? We are consuming more than we are producing. Look at coal, 4%. Electricity, 9%. Petroleum products, 25%. Gas, 6%. Biomass, 56 What is Africa going to do about this energy problem? The electricity generation needs to grow. We all I don't know. I don't think it came back. And we have spent more than $100,000. I don't know the history here. And he knows me. I don't get involved in all this. If it's a good project, I'm going to do it. We have construction going up. We have energy. We have product that's going up in there. But I'm not going to count out to any government. I'm going to thank you for the contract. You need me, I don't need you. I should have paid you to develop your country. Hmm. You have to pay the government of future to provide power. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Ladies and gentlemen, I stopped there for a reason because we need to also discuss briefly. Issue of power in Africa. Because, like I told you, energy and power are two different things. Most of the stuff that I present to you, I use it for seminars and workshops in my own business. But I think you will benefit from it. That's why I put it here. Because you need to know the difference between energy and power. So, when any one of those are that that they say, yes, I'm the president of the Alibobi. I'm the president of Kenya. Ask them, what have you done for your people in the What difference have you made in the lives of your citizens? Because if 
you are in darkness, you are not going to be the light. If you haven't given it to the wrong people. Isn't that the truth? Right. A person that cannot swim across the river cannot help you to cross the river. Okay? Uh -huh. So, don't believe the hype. The power sector is a power generating sector that consists of electricity generation plants, transmission, distribution, infrastructure support, and quality customer service. Quality customer service is lacking. Okay? You can produce the electricity all you want. If the customers are not happy, you are dead in water. And that's why I wanted to share this briefly with you. Because the power sector includes not only the power generating companies, but the government regulatory agencies and transmission and distribution uh, companies. Who are the key players? The utility companies, government and ministries, utility lobbies, environmental and community group. Other players they include the transmission and service providers. <clears throat> but the main thing is foreign investment. We need foreign investors in Africa. But they will not invest. If you don't have people are not investing in your own country, how can you convince you to come to Africa? When you sitting down there majestically like an Asian king, you haven't done anything for yourself. I want you to come and spend my own money. Ah, please. <laughs> so, foreign factors of power sector. What sort of again? countries, they are very good in using power, but they don't believe in conservation. Okay? That's another thing, very good contradiction. We want to use the power, but we don't want to conserve it. How are you going to have anything left if you use it all up? So, it makes sense to look at all these things in a holistic fashion. That's why I put this package together. The energy, power, and environmental impact. Because they are in common. And don't let anybody fool you. No GE, no Wilson partner or any company in this country can produce electricity for these people in Africa unless the Africans are ready for the electricity. And there are things that we can do on our own to improve our own condition. We don't need the generator. Everybody in
It's not the only thing to do. Okay? Then you have all bodies shut from food creation. When the other bodies go up, you have to buy more energy with more money. Destruction by conflict. By balance of people who go there, that's the sound of magic. The destination don't meant to be. But they do listen with us, let's go there and break it out. Ability. And the father of them all, corruption. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening. God bless you.